and welcome to another season of Altsam Wanem. I'm Florence John Duo. In this first episode, we bring you the Managalas people's conservation journey from the Afora district in Oro province. 360,000 hectares of their land area is now legally declared a conservation area. <laughs> Papua New Guinea holds some of the world's most concentrated biodiversity. It is said that PNG has over 5% of the world's biodiversity in less than 1% of the world's total land area. Papua New Guineans have been living in this rich biodiversity for thousands of years. However, in recent years, mining, oil and gas extraction, large-scale plantation agriculture and logging is a growing threat to the biodiversity and natural systems in the country. In order to safeguard this rich biodiversity, the concept of conservation came about. In 2009, the Youth Conservation Area in Morobe Province was declared as the first legally protected area in PNG. Following that, on November 29, 2017, 360,000 hectares of land area in the Managalas Plateau was officially declared a conservation area. This is the story of how the initiative started and the conservation journey. So around 1983-84, students from the University of Papua New Guinea Department of uh, Language and Literature did their project in Oro province and uh, the, their work took them up to Managalas Plateau over the mountains east of here and they came into uh, this plateau and then made way to Itokama right here, the village across there, uh, Itokama and Naukonane. That's where the uh, adult literacy program of the uh, Managalas uh, project started and then eventually expanded into the uh, conservation project with uh, Dr. Mike Olson and uh, some of the students at that time uh, who are here with us today, Winston Manukayasi and, uh, in fact, Mr. John Duo was also part of this project, the journey. The journey went through three different phases. The first phase was trying to get the people of Managlas to learn to read and write and to do awareness. And the adult education program was the initial contact point. And then SIL was doing the Bible translation here. That's where Dr. Michaelson came in. And then Dr. Michaelson uh, also wanted to see some form of development happening on the Managlas Plateau. So there was conflict between his work as a Bible translator and what he wanted to see the Managlas people uh, get from what resources they have on this land. And so partners with Melanesians got registered uh, on the 11th of August 1998. And so Vincent and uh, Damien Assez, uh, student at the University of Papua New Guinea started talking about conservation and development on this uh, plateau. And uh, there is a lot of uh, mobilization, community mobilization, educational awareness, and trying to uh, look at the, the community structures that are in place, the decision-making process. The elders of Managalas made their decision years ago that they didn't want logging or oil palm plantations in their area. Over time, uh, a lot of decisions were made, but uh, the most important decision that was made uh, on the plateau was at the village in the center of the Managlas Plateau called Dea. They made a decision there in 1992 that Managlas Plateau will not allow large-scale development projects like logging, oil palm and mining. The people of Managalas didn't want to see any logging, industrial logging of the area. They wanted to protect the, the land and they didn't want to see any oil palm. Um, they wanted an alternative development model based on their own resources and on a pace and taking a direction of their own liking, not defined by outsiders by, but by themselves. And I'm one of those who do not really believe that some of these large-scale industrial kind of logging operations or mining operations really do benefit because people are not prepared to take that on. Yes, it creates a bit of jobs and of course there's revenue for the government as such, but for the people themselves, they need to rely on the resources and, and, and what they have on their own land. 
in order to develop their own communities. There's nobody else that can do that for them, but they need encouragement and you need to have time. Time and time. We continue after the break with the Managalas Conservation Area Declaration at Itokama in the Afora District of Oro Province. The Managalas Conservation Area of 360,000 hectares is by far the biggest conservation area in PNG. Research work started in this area in 2003 with continuous education, awareness and capacity building for the locals. As a result of this, 11 community-based organizations or CBOs were formed and registered with the umbrella organization called the Managalas Conservation Foundation, or MCF. Governor for Oro, Gary Jufa, expressed his gratitude to the Managalas people who have agreed to have their land become the biggest legally declared conservation area. This is a big contribution, and thanks to them, they have placed Papua New Guinea on the world map in playing its part in implementing provisions of the Convention on Biological Diversity. I want to acknowledge our landowners, those who are custodians of our land here, who in their wisdom have made a significant sacrifice. But I can tell you it is not a sacrifice, it is an investment. It is an investment for your future generations. What you have done is priceless. You cannot put a price tag to what you have achieved here. 360,000 hectares as a contribution to not just this nation's effort, but the world in terms of what you have done is so significant. <laughs> that I undertake to return so that we may spend some more time, the type of time that is relevant so that we may carry out whatever necessary cultural obligations, so that we may acknowledge the great effort that you have done, all the clans and all the leaders. Whilst the world is gathering at various locations and discussing and workshopping and conferencing about climate change, about global warming and so forth, here is a practical example of what the people are doing. There is a significant contribution insofar as the country is also concerned to the global community and Managalas, Managalas, in the 1% of land, 360,000 hectares, is a powerful contribution in so far as Papua New Guinea's contribution to the global community. Governor Jufa reiterated that governments are rushing into making trade agreements with the main aim of generating profits and do not put in the same effort to acknowledge contributions such as what the people of Managalas have done. I acknowledge the people of Managalas who have rejected logging and who have rejected that type of economic development which are short-term gains that will benefit only a small number of people. We must instead focus on our ancient cultures as well and not forget and abandon them so that we come quickly to embrace globalization which brings with it not only good benefits, but also sinister arrangements that can isolate us and be to our detriment. For people who have worked for years with the Managalas people, one factor that they pointed out as having a significant impact on having this area declared a conservation area, with having 152 clans agreeing on conservation, is the traditional decision-making process and conflict resolution. What is unique about this Managlas Plateau is that they already have the system of uh, decision making where every household, every uh, clan, every family are involved in making decisions. 
once a decision is made, uh, they get at the village gathering or through the clan uh, systems and then agree on that decision. Everybody uh, has a tend to discuss the issues. And so when partners started looking at the different forms of decision making process here, they saw that this uh, consensus building process was a very important uh, way to gauge people's uh, views and for them to uh, make decisions. So it became part of the uh, Rainforest Literacy Program of uh, Partners with Melanesians. I think the, uh, one of the things that uh, has been interesting is that they have you know, this um, the customer way of, of solving problems, for instance, in, in, in discussions, communal discussions that we have developed. Um, and, and I think that this, this idea of developing uh, solutions together as, as a community, when you have a problem, you deal with it, you seek information, what is the problem? What is the problem all about? We need information in order to solve that. And you sit down, the families, the clan groups, we involve any, everybody. So you get a consensus around the next steps, you would like to say. And I, I think that is one of the things that you will find in many communities around PND, but which has not been developed. It's a resource. And, and, but for many development actors, they see that as a, as a hindrance to development. But I see it as a resource. When we return, you will hear from some major partners and locals from the Managalas area who were there since the journey to conservation began 32 years ago. The Managalas people's journey to conservation together with their main partner, the Partners with Melanesians, or PWM, was not all smooth. Challenges were faced along the way. A lot of uh, challenges that came on, the people were actually divided. A lot of uh, interest here, mining interest, came in and they, uh, the mining, miners wanted to have this whole area and they divided the, the plateau. The western side towards Tatabedi is one exploration license area. This area in the middle, uh, to uh, Koruo, is one exploration license area. And one going further east to Afore down to Orobe, uh, Pongani, is another exploration license area. Three exploration license areas. And each of the three licenses were under the name of one company, an Australian mining company, Gold Minex. When we told uh, the tribal leaders here under the consensus building process that your area is now covered by the government to have mining, the people said no, we don't want mining because many of the elders that have died have already made a decision that there will be no mining on Managlas. Other partners such as the Rainforest Foundation of Norway or RFN who worked with the people and PWM also recognized and acknowledged the challenges in place towards reaching a consensus for conservation. One thing is that there are three different language groups. Uh, there are, of course, rivalries and, and uh, uh, cultural differences. And uh, you have, like you have in every community in PND, things are happening. Uh, always a problem with money, for instance, can be a problem, jealousy, and, and, and it's a vast land area. And there will probably continue to be problems, but it's, again, extremely important not to give up. Olsen Wanem also had the opportunity to talk to Managalas locals who were there since day one to make sure their area is conserved. Literacy program began as a lead up, as a lead up to, to, to what we are now celebrating. All of us you know, wanted some kind of a, a change must come about in Managalas, but yet we've been you know, so long been marginalized. And since uh, that has come, uh, you know, they, they found out that there is something that uh, we need to talk about. But it has to go through, you know, consensus building. Uh, all people yet must talk, talk, and decide, you know, what's best for the people of Managlas. I was uh, 16, 16 years old when I started this work. Uh, uh, for my personality, I see that literacy is one of the key major things that uh, uh, we need and literacy is the light of the world. 
The locals acknowledged PWM's work with them for over 30 years, which clearly outlines the determination and effort PWM has in giving a hand when needed to help with conservation and community development. PWM has been working with us for a solid 33 years, and PWM said that lots of things. In uh, They have been monitoring us, training us under capacity building. And as for me, I, I believe that I, I, I was brought up with the partners. They educated me up to these places, and they have done, they've done much for the people of Manangaras. The locals have expressed that the type of development they want is sustainable and will not cause harm to their natural environment. We have been long expecting you know, some kind of a service that is really friendly, environmental friendly, and, and these services will stay for long uh, because we feel that you know we, we live at the, at the head of all the water sources that lead to Oro province. And if we begin something else that is destructive, we might as well, you know, wipe out our province. So some of those sustainable uh, development that we want is one of them is the major cash crop is coffee. And coffee has been with us for so long. And one of those hindrances to is accessibility to have our coffee sent out. And we are still at the worst state. And we need uh, coffee to be to be developed, we need better infrastructure in place so that uh, people will benefit uh, fully from, from the coffee. I call on brothers and sisters who have uh, conservation-minded people across Papua New Guinea to join us as uh, the legislation is in place that about 17% of the customer land must be conserved. And I feel that before it's too late, now it's the time. To, to say yes, we are here to give our land to be conserved so that uh, our future generation can benefit uh, without having their land uh, destroyed. Chairman of MCF, Malkas Kajia, has also urged responsible authorities to step up and recognize the vast contribution done by the Managalas people and to make sure basic service delivery reaches them. Since the entire Managlas people, the 300, uh, the 20,000 people plus, uh, have decided to give away their land to be conserved, uh, and we have no other options but to call on the government of the day, the O'Neill and the uh, able government, and uh, the Honorable Gary Jufa, our governor, and the president, and Egyptari member, uh, to look into our uh, the road, as it's being a priority for us to, that the road must be in a better condition for us to access and have some of our produce, uh, sell them out to, to a better market, sustainably where we will, where, where our people can, can rightfully benefit. The declaration of the Managalas area is not the end of the journey, but a beginning of a new chapter. Their plans forward in terms of sustainable development programs and service delivery is high on the people's agenda. More when we come back. The declaration of the Managalas Conservation Area shows determination the people and their partners had in making sure their land is protected. 32 years on and they have fulfilled that. It's fantastic, of course, uh, it's, it's fantastic, but uh, of course 20 years is a long time, but one thing that I've learned over the years is that you need to have patience and don't give up. It's very important not to give up. And that if you want to make things happen, you just have to carry on and carry on and carry on. And be, uh, mistakes being made, you have to redo it and do it all over again. And you have to address people's complaints, sort it out, uh, and just carry on and on and on. Don't give up. That's, that's the only way to do it. 
conservation of the Managalas area is just the first leg of a long journey. They now embark on the second leg to utilize their own resources to develop their area. This is where the work that we started back in 1983 ends. This is one chapter of the journey. But it does not mean that we end here. We are opening a new page to the next chapter. And the journey will have to continue. And now that uh, partners with Melanesians, we came on board only to facilitate. Support the Managlas people, support the 11 community-based organizations, support the elders, create awareness, education, and empower them. Being a Papua New Guinean, I, I don't think our work stops here. We are going to work with them on the new page into the new chapter and see where we go. Because there are many dangers ahead of the, the new journey. It means that two main challenges is how effectively can we partners with Melanesians, Managlas Conservancy Foundation, the people of Managlas, Oro Provincial Government, Afora LLG, SEPA, how can we effectively manage this huge area, 360,000 hectares? That's a big challenge. It is now a shared responsibility between the Managalas people, the Managalas Conservation Foundation or MCF, PWM and government arms to manage this vast area effectively. Another challenge ahead is how can responsible authorities and the locals work together to bring economic incentives for the people. We're talking about 22,000 people living on this plateau. They have a huge potential here. Coffee, annual production is about 900 hectares, 900 tons of organic coffee. And uh, there's about 3,600 farmers and families actually growing coffee here. We did a survey in 2006 and we know the capacity of coffee that this plateau can produce. So 900 tons, less 25%. If you export that, that's, you're talking about 20, 30 million kina annual income for the people of Managlas. That money can be used to do development projects here, support health services, infrastructure, support the education of the kids here and help the, help the women, help the mothers here to do something better. We, we cannot continue to depend on the national government and all the provincial government. This plateau has a potential to self-raise money from its natural resources and support the people here. The challenge we have is how we can translate the resources that we have, our forest resources, into meaningful, meaningful development for you. The locals were encouraged to stand together to make sure their area is protected for the generations to come. All of us must pull together, work together, ensure that our future is not only guaranteed for us now, but the future generation of our children that will come after us. I want to acknowledge and support the, thank the former board of uh, directors for MCF, uh, partners with Melanesians, the people, uh, whose spirits are with us today, the people that have worked with us and have passed on, they've done a lot of work and we just helped them. So I should uh, thank all of them. And lastly, the people that gave us the money, 14 million kina over 20 years, the Rainforest Foundation of Norway. They are here and uh, I believe they will be with us for the next uh, chapter. That's all we have for you this week. Join us again same time next week as we take you for a visit to the National Fisheries College in New Island Province to see some of the research work that is carried out on Nago Island Research Facility. If you have any comments or stories you would like to share with us, please send us an email via the address showing on your screen or visit our Awesome One and Facebook page. Until next week, I'm Florence John Duo. Thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening.